Good afternoon, everyone, and I uh, want to give you a little bit of background on what we're doing today. In 2012, I hired Chief Tony Taylor to lead the Crestview Police Department, which was a troubled agency beset with legal and moral issues. His directive was to restore the trust and confidence in our citizens for their police department, to establish and update badly needed reforms for accountability and cultivate a culture of professionalism among our officers. He and I both felt that the best yardstick for measuring our progress and success and meeting those goals would be through the formal accreditation process by the Florida Law Enforcement Accreditation Commission. Today, I am happy to announce that as of last week, the commission recognized the Crestview Police Department as a fully accredited law enforcement agency that met the specific requirements and prescribed standards as adopted by the Florida Commission. This is a major milestone for the Crestview Police Department. And Chief Taylor and his staff are to be commended for their perseverance in attaining these standards. Chief Taylor will now present some of the information on how the accreditation process worked and what we've been working on and what we'll be doing in the future. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks for coming out today. Um, the accreditation process is uh, the brass ring for a law enforcement agency. Uh, it, uh, it's a, it's a, a huge step toward the professionalism uh, for the community and, and the agency itself. It was dire, uh, direly needed uh, here in Crestview uh, when I took over the agency. And uh, I had uh, been an accreditation manager previously in another life. But uh, uh, so I, I knew the merits of it. It's uh, the benefits of it to the agency, to the community, and to the officers uh, that, that we and you know the community that we serve. But uh, uh, chiefly among it, it's it's a lot of hard work too. It's uh, we uh, it's not just something that they give out. Uh, there there have been agencies that have been declined to be accredited because they did not meet the standards that were established for Florida accreditation. And I might note that Florida leads the nation in state accreditation in law enforcement. So we, we had to deal with 200, over 260 standards with hundreds and thousands of bullets under some of those standards uh, in order to achieve the success. Uh, we, we, uh, we had to rewrite policy. Uh, as, as the mayor mentioned, or, you know, some of our, our policies were archaic. Uh, we rewrote those to comply with the accreditation standards. Uh, the, the standards, uh, the, one of the misconceptions in the public is that the Accreditation Commission now controls your police department. It does not. Okay, they just say that we need, a, we need to write a policy in this particular area. It's up to us how we write the policy, and, which is very important because it's not an outside agency coming in to run your, your local police department. We, we're still in charge. But we meet the standards. It's all professionalism. It's all geared toward professionalism, and these standards are updated three times a year when the Standards Review and Interpretations Committees meet to go over standards that are no longer applicable uh, to the law enforcement profession or standards that, that uh, we need to put into place or standards that we need to modify to stay at, uh, you know, up, to, up to modern times. So it's a continual process. And it's not just the fact that we, got, we, we went through this to get accredited. Uh, we've, we've actually been working on it very steadily for the last two years. Uh, before that, uh, as the mayor said, we, we had some issues. We had to rewrite the policies. We had to change some culture. We had to do some house cleaning. So that being done, we were able to focus on accreditation. So it's, it's, we've actually uh, been able to accomplish this uh, uh, within, the, within about a two-year period of time, which is really uh, a, good, a good timeline for an agency that was as troubled as, as this one was when I became the chief. So, but it's not a process that we get it accredited today and, and we're accredited from now on. Okay, we have to go through this accreditation process every three years. At this particular point, we've had to prove that we are in compliance with our own policies. Okay, and three years from now, we have to prove over a three year period of time that we've remained in compliance with all of the standards that are applicable to us. Okay, so it's, it's, not, it's not a simple process. It is a lot of hard work involved in it. Uh, I've got to thank the mayor for his support 
in this whole process. Uh, he, he recognized the merit of accreditation right off the bat. What accreditation tells us, tells our community, is that we are holding ourselves to a higher standard than the community expects us to. What accreditation tells the men and women who work at the Crestview Police Department, it sets, uh, it sets everything out. All the policies and their procedures are in writing. They can develop a career path based on our policies now. It's not uh, a good old boy system of promotion uh, when uh, you're a member of the Breakfast Club and you get tapped on the shoulder one day and you're promoted and three weeks later you're demoted for no reason, no particular reason whatsoever. Men and women now earn promotions and they have to, believe it or not, earn a demotion. Uh, so th things are set. Uh, where, where the officers know the do's and the don'ts. And, and it's procedural as well. They can refer to our policy manual now and, and it will actually tell them in certain cases what has to be in their reports. Uh, it's, so it's a process that professionalize, professionalizes the whole law enforcement uh, community uh, that partake in the, in the accreditation. And uh, uh, again, we've, we have uh, become among those numbers now in the state of Florida and we're very proud to stand here today. I'd like to introduce you to uh, Commander Schneider, uh, who is our accreditation manager. He's done a wonderful job getting us to where we are. We had one issue in our on-site, which uh, we were exceeded compliance with the accreditation standard. We just had to take some verbiage out of one of our policies. Other than that, we had a flawless on-site assessment. And uh, Commander Schneider uh, uh, has, has really poured himself into this. He's a believer as is uh, most of the uh, 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 men and women of the Crestview Police Department are today. So, so thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? What was the most difficult task, do you think? Because you've done this before, so. Yeah. What was the most difficult task of uh, getting this well, changing the culture, actually. We had, in this particular uh, situation here in Crestview, uh, as I said, most of the people were anxious for this because this is a step toward the professionalism. Uh, uh, and, and it's reaching out to the community as well. It's letting the community know we're here. We're here for you. And we, we exceed what you expect from us at this point. And from now on, we, we intend on keeping this up. So before the accreditation process started, you guys well, they had policies. They had policies. A lot of them were outdated. I, I noticed that one of the first things I noticed when I came in were some of the policies were dated back in the 1990s. And so we, we had to update the whole thing. That is the most time-consuming process of the whole thing. And then training the officers and the employees in the policies and how to use them, where to look things up. Uh, what's expected of them, what's, what's not expected of them, things like that. What they can do, what they can't do, and what they're not expected to do. Uh, one of the things that's very important, one of our policies uh, uh, now, and, uh, uh, and it may have been uh, before as well, but uh, they don't have to obey illegal orders. Uh, if, if an order given to them is illegal, it is their responsibility not to obey that order. And that was a big issue uh, with, uh, with the, when I took over the Crestview Police Department. So. Uh, so that, that being said, it's uh, the, the, probably the uh, longest part of the process was uh, realigning the policies and training everybody on the new policies. Was there a lot of pushback by the officers? I mean, just, just not because of doing the accreditation, but just difficult for them to make some adjustments and now we finally got to follow a real policy back in the block pushback? No, I'm not aware of any pushback at all. Like I said, the, 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 the benefit to the officers is now it's in writing. Everything's in writing. Their career paths are in writing. They know how to get promoted. They know what the qualifications are. They know what the, the tenure is. They, they know how to work toward sitting in my seat one day if that's what their, their, their eventual goal is. So. <laughs> if you reach that goal you were looking for where every officer will be able to on his laptop when he's out of control, access and if you need any part of the policy, he needs to read. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the, that's another one of the uh, uh, accreditation standards that the officers have, are, are able to be access those policies and get answers they needed whenever they need them. And they can pull it right up on their laptops in their cars. Uh, they can pull it up at home. Uh, you know, they, any, anytime they need to research a policy, they can pull it up and look at it. And they can talk to, and or they can talk to their supervisors or even up the chain of command and get clarification on the spirit of the policy if it's not clear. It is a public record, absolutely. Uh, haven't decided that yet, but that's that's actually a good idea. It's actually a good idea. Documentation 
from the accreditation folks, maybe the public about what they what they found in you. There was a report or something we can access if we wanted to just to see their feelings and their thoughts and their comments. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Commander Schneider, just make uh, we'll make the report available to you. Uh, as soon as uh, the conference is over. It's, uh, it's not very long. It'll take you about 10 minutes to read it, and it'll tell you how good we are. <laughs> how many pages was the documentation that you did? You you were able to mention, how, many, how many pages of documentation did you submit to them to review? Well, it's submitted through a computer. It's uh, through a, a power DMS system that we, that we actually uh, lease from the state. Uh, we, we pay a monthly or a yearly fee for that. Um, and uh, would you care to estimate that? How many documents we scanned and uploaded? Well, if we include our policy, there's, if we if we include the policy, there's about 1,170 uh, pages that they had to review as far as the policy, not not just including the application and um, you know the the documents necessary for the process, but for uh, the policy review itself, it's around 1,170. Now, remember for some of those policies as well, uh, that 1,170, I would venture to say, would only scratch the surface because. We again have to provide proof if they if we uh, there's a standard on on uh, taking a sexual battery report and conducting an investigation. There's multiple standards involved there, so that report would have to uh, to be duplicated multiple times to be scanned and uploaded into the system, so they could check to to make sure we are in compliance with our policies and, and accreditation standards. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It is. It's absolutely voluntary. This is something we, we, we uh, decided here at the Crestview Police Department from day one when I became the chief. Having had experience in this arena before, uh, I was the accreditation manager for the Fort Walton Police Department uh, from 1999 to 2010. So uh, I, I, I appreciated the merit of it. And it, like I said, it is voluntary. It's a lot of tough work. This, and again, it's just saying to the public, we want to hold ourselves to a higher standard than you expect us to. For the folks who don't, don't give me another word, you kind of talk about you did this accreditation process, if you had inspectors come in a couple of times to kind of do a free run through before mm -hmm. they just so the public knows this kind of thing. Well, the, the, the routine is we, when we get to a point where we, where we think we're close to being ready for our on site, uh, and, and just to throw this out, I think it'd be suicide for us to go into an on site inspection without a mock. They, they want to describe what an on site is. Okay. Well, let me start out with the mock. What we do is when we, when we feel like we're, cl we're close to being ready for our on-site inspection, or which, is, which is the inspection, the formal inspection, we, we perform what we call a mock inspection. Uh, and in our case, we actually, uh, I have some friends in, that are assessors. We brought them up and they took a look around and they kind of gave us some pointers and what, uh, what to address. Uh, then we do, a, we, we spent the, the rest of the time getting our policies lined up, training our, our people on policies, and then we've called a mock team in. And then they do a dry run, basically. Uh, they go through all of the accreditation standards and the computer system and look at all the proofs that we've offered and all that. And then they tell us uh, what we need to do further to get ready for the on-site inspection, which is generally about two to three months later. And the on-site inspection is the formal uh, inspection process. Military people would kind of refer to it as an IG inspection, where they come in. And uh, we, uh, for, the, for the formal inspection, we actually set a, uh, what we call a static display, which we did right out in front of Warrior Hall here and inside Warrior Hall, where we make officers available for them to interview. Just, not just looking at files, they come out and they interview our officers, they ride with our officers, they, in, they physically inspect all of our facilities here to make sure we're in compliance with all the standards. It's not just taking our word for it. That's what, that's what the on-site is all about, is verifying what we say we're doing that we are actually doing it. How many days does that take? That's three days. That's three solid days of uh, assessment. You got something to show us? I do. If you have no more questions, uh, we're very proud to, uh, and this will be on display in our lobby. Here is our official accreditation certificate award. Chief knows how excited I am about this. It's something that I proposed in a, in a former, uh, to a former uh, leadership and um, was given some false information about how much it would cost, and that sort of thing. Found out when Chief Taylor got here that wasn't so. And so I've been long a, in pursuit of accountability 
and transparency. Everything that we do in government should be, we should be held accountable and it should be easy for the public to see what we're doing. So I'm so proud of these, uh, th this team that worked on this and um, I, I can't tell them how much I appreciate them. So I am excited about it. Hey, Peter, you got a fellow standing back there down in uniform. How long before he gets trained and put in uniform? Uh, he won't be wearing a uniform, but that's, uh, that brings me to the next thing I wanted to announce to, to, uh, to you all today. Uh, we have uh, employed a public information officer now. He's not a sworn officer, uh, but he will be handling our public information. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, the media doesn't have access to me. Uh, as always, I'll, I'll always have access to you, but I, I can't do, be everywhere and do everything all the time. So uh, if I, I've, I've got a little something I want to read. Uh, Brian comes to us, Brian uh, uh, Hughes comes to us uh, with, uh, fully credentialed and very experienced and, and he's already hit the ground running. Today was his first day. Uh, Brian? Uh, it's Brian Hughes, he's our new uh, public information officer. Uh, Brian was born and raised in northern New Jersey. We've forgiven him for that. <laughs> Growing up in a small community on a mountain in the state's rural northwest, his passion for shaping people's stories through journalism was born in sixth grade when he became a founding editorial staff member of Lounsbury um, Hollow Meadows School's newspaper, for which he wrote humor columns and drew comics. This led to his founding of the Vista Road Gazette, a neighborhood monthly with the vast circulation of five. Uh, the maximum attainable through the reproduction by carbon paper fills from his father. Uh, trash can there. Uh, the Gazette featured a groundbreaking environmental series lambasting Mr. Pfeiffer who, who rather than ringing uh, Mrs. Brophy's doorbell remained in her upbeat smoke belching Ford station wagon and would lean on her horn until Mrs. Brophy and appeared at the door and, and waved, waved her on inside. He was the editor of the Warwick Valley in New York uh, high school newspaper. We've forgiven him for that as well. Uh, <laughs> The survey for two consecutive years, and the Tulane University wrote for the uh, Hullabaloo, the main campus weekly. Later, he was a founding staff member of the alternative weekly, the, the Tulane Torch. Upon graduation, he served as a student services staff advisor to the student media, with duties including teaching journalism and graphic design seminars. Brian was a free freelance writer for the New Orleans Weekly and daily newspapers, including entertainment and travel features. He uh, was summer theatric critic for the award-winning Gambit Weekly and was a regular con contributor to the Times-Picayune's industry-recognized travel section. He was a pro uh, production assistant for an Emmy award-winning video producer in New Orleans and produced a three-part video series on European travel for the Council on International Educational Exchange. Upon moving to Crestview, Brian became a freelance columnist for The Hub. Uh, the North Okaloosa County Weekly, published by the Northwest Florida Daily News. Upon the Daily News parent company, company's acquisition of the Crestview News Bulletin in 2007, Brian became the Bulletin's full-time writer and arts and entertainment editor, specializing in community government, education, and arts and culture stories. Brian left the News Bulletin in September 2016 to accept a position as a public information officer for the Crestview Police Department. He is active in the community, including serving as the president of the Crestview Area Sister City Program, a member of the Ch uh, Crestview Area Chamber of Commerce, and a founding member of the Crestview Friends of the Arts. He is an elder and clerk of session in the Laurel Hill Presbyterian Church, an enthusiast of the James Bond books and films, and a European traveler, and occasionally lectures at schools for community groups and the Crestview Public Library, and at the Crestview Public Library on a variety of topics uh, and at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans on topics related to the war in Europe. Uh, Brian is very safety conscious. He never runs with scissors. So uh, we're very proud to have Brian on board with us. And, uh, and uh, Brian, like I say, he's already hit the ground running. Would you like to say a few words, Brian? <laughs> well, sure. Um, I'm just very excited to be on this side of the microphone. Uh, over the years uh, with the newspaper, I've had an opportunity to see the Crestview Police Department nosedive and then just watch this wonderful steady climb. And uh, I've written several glowing articles, I think, about Chief Taylor and his officers' accomplishments. And that's not why I got the job, by the way. It was just they were very easy to write because of all the wonderful things that were happening in the department. And um, just to see this improvement in our community. And it finally really, I think, hit home to me earlier this year when I interviewed an officer 
who was new to the department, uh, mainly about his vehicle. I was writing a story about the refurbished police vehicles. Mm -hmm. And this officer told me he lives in Pensacola, had been heavily recruited by the Santa Rosa Sheriff's Office at a higher salary, but chose to come to Crestview because the word is on the street among the law enforcement community that Crestview's police department is a great place to work. So I'm eager to find that out for myself. So I'm excited to be here and look forward to continuing to work with you and, and help all of you as need be. Do you have any questions, Brian? We, we, we did. It was Commander Schneider, but he wears about 43 hats. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really very difficult for him to juggle uh, the, and then give, give the, the, uh, the, the true attention that the public information function really needs. We're striving for that, as the mayor said, to be completely transparent. The only way we can do that is to have somebody out there telling everybody what's going on in the Crestview Police Department. And it's, it was just difficult for us to, or for Commander Schneider or anybody else to juggle these things. I, 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 and I'll tell you, the, the, the responsibilities since I became the chief have uh, increased substantially. I, when, I, when I became the chief, there were five lieutenants and an assistant chief, and myself was the command staff, and that was way top heavy. I've slimmed the command staff down now to two commanders, one assistant chief, and myself. The rest of the boots are in the field. And that's the way I think it should be. But again, we've had to split a lot of those duties up. So he's going to be, he, he just hasn't realized what he got himself into yet. <laughs> so, any other questions? How long does the renovation last? When, when do you require to do another one? Three years. We have, we have, we'll have another, the whole process repeats in three years. We'll, uh, at, and over the course of the next three years, we're not going to be sitting idle. We are going to be constantly, daily, working on making sure we gather the proofs needed to, to show that we're meeting the standards and living within our policies. And that will be your job? No, no, we have a, a separate, it will be a Commander Schneider's job, yes. yes. I'm sorry. That will be uh, yeah. job of the accreditation. Staying on top of that? Not just that, but no. that's, that's one of my main yeah. That's one of, he's got several functions. He's a training officer. Uh, he's our tactical commander. He's he's got a lot of a lot of irons in the fire. Yeah, he does. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I did uh, when we when we first uh, uh, were gearing up after the mock assessment, and we, and we got that list back from the not mock assessors on what we needed to 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 address before the on-site. I put a cot in his office. <laughs> so, but I, I will say that this this is a tremendous milestone not just for the Crestview Police Department, for the community of Crestview, it really is. Uh, you have bragging rights now that your department is an accredited, a professional police department. Uh, and we've done this, uh, again, uh, you know, there, there have been some naysayers, and we've done this in spite of the naysayers. So uh, we're very proud of this accomplishment. It's a lot of hard work for the, not just Commander Schneider, uh, but the, all the members of the Crestview Police Department.